just started. Just to be honest with you, I was not looking forward to this movie, but let's get this over with. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review. For the strangers, pray at night. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click that little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now, we have The Strangers, which is a sequel to the original films, The Strangers, which came out in 2008. I did see that movie. I thought it was okay. I thought it was decent. Um, I didn't think it was the best thing in the world. But if you are a fan of horror films, I think that you would, you know, find something in that movie to appreciate. Um, and I, I just thought it was okay. But now we have Strangers Pray at Night. This is, uh, like I said in my intro, a movie that I was not looking forward to. One, just because the movie just didn't look that good to me. And also, I'm just not the best with horror and scary movies. Uh, but this one didn't seem that scary, so I just kind of, you know, went in head first. It's being directed by Johannes Roberts. If you know him, he directed 47 Meters Down, which came out last year, 2017, which I did review uh, on my channel and also on my website. It was a pretty good movie. I did like it. He also directed The Other Side of the Door, another horror film, which came out in 2016. Um, but I did not get to see that film. Now, this movie, like I said, is a sequel. Um, the directors, not the directors, the writers are Brian Bertino and Ben Katai. And uh, Brian Bertino wrote in, um, he wrote the first film as well. He also directed the first film as well, but now he wrote and directed the first film, but now he just coming in as the writer. And then you also have Ben Katai, who um, is part of the writing team as well. And about this movie, uh, Strangers Pray at Night, it says that this is based on true events. Uh, it does not say that it's based on a true story. To me, the difference is based on true story is probably majority of the film is actually based on a true story, beat for beat, storyline, all that good stuff. Based on a true event is they just some random things in this movie, you know, may be true. Um, I think the well, I don't think the uh, synopsis for this movie is this, you know, it's a family that is staying at a mobile home park that is owned by some relatives of theirs. And these three mass psychopaths come and just start killing everybody that's there and murdering them for no um, apparent reason. So when I say based on true events, I imagine that, yeah, maybe some people did get murdered at a mobile park home, or, you know, rest in peace if that's what happened. But a lot of the things in this movie may have changed just for, you know, a better a story to make a better movie make a better film i'm not sure but early on in the film i will honestly say that i liked it a lot um it was a family of four um you had cindy who was the mother kenzie which is the daughter mike was the father and luke is the son oh and real quick luke's real name is uh lewis pullman he's actually bill pullman's real son so if you don't know who bill pullman is he was the president of the united states in the Independence Day movie with uh, Will Smith and Angela, not Angela Bassett, but Vic, uh, Vivica A. Fox way back in the 90s. But we have this family of four. Uh, they are not the best family. And what I mean by not the best family is maybe I should have phrased it different. They don't, you know, they don't get along and no family does get along all the time. You know, they have the differences. It's not, you know, just some perfect family to where, you know, they eat at the dinner every, they eat at the dinner, they eat at the table every day for dinner. Aha, oh, how was your day, honey? And you know that you do your homework and they have a nice picket fence and no no, no. Um, they have a lot of problems which is fine uh, one of the daughters uh, not one of the daughters the daughters is kind of um, a rebel I guess she kind of stirs up a lot of trouble and her parents are sending her off to boarding school um, because apparently she's out of control but we really don't get to see that and so um, that's where a rift in the relationship is and they just want to go on a va family vacation you know before the daughter goes off to boarding school and that's where the story uh, starts in this film now like I said I really did like that um, I like the characters um, individually. I like the family dynamic. I like the dialogue that was going on. I like that you know, like I said, everything wasn't perfect with this family, and um, you know they had problems. And I was assuming that going into this movie, as it's starting off, they was going to have problems, but they 
there was going to have this tragic event at this motor, mobile park home. And then that is what was going to bring them together. You know, they possibly survived this horrific, you know, time at this mobile park home. So the first act of the film, I really did appreciate. I really did like I was on board. I was like, you know, hey, this is going to be a pretty decent horror flick. But then as soon as the second act started, uh, that's when I had to just clock out and I never came back. I mean, it's like all the characters in this movie, uh, you know, um, fall victim to something like, you know, SCS, stupid character syndrome, because when they really um, got put in the face of fear, all logic and reason just ran completely out the door and out the window to the other side of the earth. Uh, I was very frustrated with this movie to where I just really didn't like it at all. Uh, I wanted to leave. And I know I said that in my Wrinkle of Time video, my movie review. I didn't like that movie. And this one is even worse than that. Uh, can, can you imagine just nothing that the characters did in this movie made sense? I completely lost respect for the father, Mike. I mean, you are a horrible father. You are a horrible husband. I mean, they writ they wrote your character. Just you should be embarrassed. I mean, not you in real life, but just this role. I mean, he literally abandoned his family in, in this movie. You know, uh, everything was working out. Uh, the daughter, what was her name? Um, what was her name? I got her right here. Kenzie. She gets mad. She just goes running out the mobile park home. And her brother goes out and chases her. OK, everything is fine. But then they go into this mobile park home and they find some bodies chopped up and they're just like, oh, my gosh, you know, we got to get the hell out of here. So they run back to their parents and they find them and they're freaking out, scared like, man, we just saw these bodies chopped up over here. We got to get the hell out of here. So instead of doing the smart, logical thing and everybody sticking together at that one point, back to back to back to back with their eyes peeled, whatever stands that they may have in the last chance of staying alive, getting to the car and driving them away. No, that he doesn't want to do that. The father, and I, I may be spoiling this right here, but I don't care. This movie sucks. But the father's like, okay, honey, you know, let's, I, I feel like going to go investigating. So I want my wife and my daughter to go back to the mobile home by themselves and me, the man of the family with my son, the second strongest, we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're not going to stay with you. We're not going to protect you. We're not going to stick together in a group to where we have a more of a likely chance of surviving. I'm just going to leave my wife and daughter over here by themselves in a secluded mobile park home that, that is away from their home. Nobody's there. And I'm just going to go over here with my son and investigate. I mean, at that point in time, the movie just completely crashed and burned and exploded over and over and over again. And it, it just became just really stupid, you know, at that point. And I'm just like, man, is this what we're in for right here? I cannot get behind this movie. I cannot get behind these characters. I cannot get behind anything. And it just goes and it just the film just goes on doing dumb thing after dumb thing. I mean, I mean, we are, we all live in the real world, guys. Here's my cell phone. Everybody takes their cell phone with them every single place they go. People take it to the bathroom. People take it to just, they take it everywhere. And so I'm supposed to believe that when everybody's at the mobile home, every character in this movie just happened to leave their cell phone in the trailer park you know, on the table together. Like, I mean, you know, so I, it, I don't want to spoil anything else for you, but the movie just makes no sense. I just have to know. I have to say one more thing. Okay. They find a gun and that's, that's great because the bad guys, they don't have guns. They have knives. You know, I got a little pen right here. They have knives. So they find a little six shooter. You know what I'm saying? I would rather have a six shooter than a butcher knife any day. You know what I'm saying? So when one of the psychopaths is like literally stabbing and slicing uh, the brother's sister, he comes to the room and is pointing a gun and is fully loaded. He's like, stop, stop it. Stop right now. And every like literally everybody in the whole movie theater was like, shoot, shoot, you idiot. Shoot, shoot. And he doesn't want to shoot. He just I'm just I, I, I just don't understand like what is going on? Like, why did they write these characters this way? I mean, like he just could have shot, but he didn't want to shoot. He just wants to say stop it. And then the bad guy's like talking trash. And I'm just like, oh.
oh my god it's just like you rolling your eyes i want us to leave but i'm like no i don't want to walk out just yet but you know guys that's just really the gist gist of the movie it started out great i liked everything with the characters in the story and i thought we were going to head somewhere and the characters was going to have to go through an arc and be able to stick together and love each other and you know they not go to boarding school the daughter not go to boarding school because you know they just survived this tragic event but no um the the husband is what led this uh movie down a, off of a cliff by banning his family um characters are just doing stupid things after stupid things i mean I mean, when they have the numbers, they don't decide to team up to fight the psychopaths on multiple fronts. And from the second act to the ending credits, it was just very frustrating to even where when the whole movie ended, everybody just gave a deep sigh of frustration, uh, but also relief because the film was over. This movie was horrible. I do not recommend it to anyone. But, you know, then again, uh, if you want to go see it, that is on you. If I had to rate stra The Strangers a Prey and Night out of a 1 out of 10, I would give this a 1 out of 10. Yes, a 1 out of 10. This is one of the worst movies uh, that I have seen this year, uh, strictly because of the characters. But I said all that, guys, but in reality, this is just my opinion, okay? Have you seen The Strangers Prey at Night or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you don't that's fine go ahead and subscribe to my channel why would you subscribe well i do do movie reviews i have more reviews coming out this weekend i also do trailer reactions and occasionally just pop on camera and will give my opinion on the latest movie news that is entertaining to me also guys go to my website check me out there bookmark it and also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter it's right there at the bottom of the screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the strangers pray at night and before you go don't forget that my name is brenna keith avery and that's just my opinion peace